Let's be fair when we talk about the Bible. When we make an assessment of any book that we read, whether it's a study of history, whether it's a biography, or whether it's a work of fiction, we read the book and we often read it carefully. Yet many people who attack the Bible and therefore who attack the God of the Bible have never read the Bible or if they have, they've read very small passages, but they judge the Bible on what others have to say about it, or they judge the Bible on how it's portrayed through Hollywood, through film, through writing, or they judge the Bible based on how others portray it, assuming that every body that calls itself a church is following the Bible correctly. Now, if you wanted to know about the life of President John Kennedy, and you had a book that was called The Life of President John Kennedy, you would read the book. You wouldn't listen to commentaries on the book. You wouldn't read commentaries on the book. You would read the book, because those would be first-hand accounts of the life of the man. Yet, when it comes to the Bible... Most people who reject it cannot be honest enough to sit down and even read one of the 66 books contained in the Bible and make an honest assessment. You see, in many places, the Bible offers a challenge, and it's a very simple challenge. And the challenge is to read and to learn what the Word has to say and to ask God to give you understanding of what that word has to say. It's a simple test. You can open up one of the books and begin to ask God to give you understanding of what that book has to say and begin to read. Sadly, most people will reject the Bible, even on a scholarly level, based on what someone else has to say. They will accept second and third hand information as fact without ever investigating for themselves if those claims are true. That's called hypocrisy. Now if we really want to be fair, we need to look at the Bible in light of other books in history and we need to look at what type of writing the Bible, in fact, is. First of all, the Bible is not a single book. It is, in fact, 66 individual books. And these individual books are broken into two volumes, known as the Old and the New Testaments. We can think of these as major volumes. And within these major volumes, there are minor volumes. Within the Old Testament, there are volumes of law, there are volumes of history, there are volumes of books of wisdom, and there are volumes of prophecy. In the New Testament, there are also minor volumes within that major volume. There are volumes of the Gospels, including church history, there are volumes of the letters to the churches. There are volumes of general letters. They're also called epistles. And there are volumes of letters written to Hebrew believers. And there is one volume called Revelation that is also a volume of prophecy. What we have really is a type of encyclopedia, almost, that is written over a period of nearly 1,600 years, from about 1,500 B.C. to almost 100 A.D. Now, the oldest manuscripts of the Bible that we have that reflect the scriptures as they are recorded today date all the way back to about 125 A.D. This is still well 
within the lifetime of many of those who would have lived during a time when a portion of the New Testament would have been written, and when in fact some of the events in the New Testament would have taken place. Today we still have approximately 13,000 biblical manuscripts written during that time period. By comparison, if we look at some other historical texts, such as Caesar's Gaelic Wars, these were written between 144 BC. The oldest manuscripts we have for these date to about 900 AD, and we only have 10 of those copies. Yet no historians dispute the authenticity of the information in these documents. The writings of Plato, Plato's Tetralogies, were written between 427 and 347 BC. The oldest copies we have of these are dated to 900 AD, and we only have seven copies from that date. Yet again, historians consider the text in these writings 100% valid. The writings of Sophocles were written between 496 BC and 406 BC. The oldest surviving manuscripts we have from that are dated to 1000 AD, 1400 years later. We do have a hundred copies, but they're the copies dated from 1000 AD. Yet historians consider the information in those manuscripts completely valid. And Aristotle's writings from 384 to 322 BC, the oldest manuscripts we have for his writings are dated to 1100 AD. Again, nearly 1400 years later. And we have five copies. And again, they're considered totally authentic. Yet, we have 66 books of the Bible. Some of the writings are dated a mere 25 or 30 years after they were written, and yet their authenticity is disputed to this day. Furthermore, there are many, many prophecies in the Old Testament. Isaiah 53, Isaiah chapter 53 is one that really is just incredible because it speaks in great detail about the crucifixion of Jesus. And there are those that argue that from two points. One point they argue is that someone went back after Jesus was crucified and changed the writing in Isaiah. But when the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, the Dead Sea Scrolls were dated to a time period 100 to 125 years before Jesus was crucified. And they matched the Old Testament text exactly. So that theory was gone. The second theory was that some Catholic monks later on had rewritten the New Testament to put in the details of Jesus' crucifixion to make it sound, to make it match Isaiah 53 and other Old Testament passages. The problem with that is we have Greek texts predating those monks that are authenticated that already record Jesus' crucifixion before anybody had a chance to touch or alter those texts. So all of those arguments go out the window. So the challenge here in being fair is open one of the 66 books in the Bible and look at it for yourself. Ask yourself, am I being honest in light of this information? If I want to know about a person in history, if I want to know about an event in history, if I want to know about world events today, I open up something and I read. I go to a website and I read. I go to a television station and I watch. And even then, you're not really sure if you're getting the straight information, but at least you're trying to get it firsthand. But when it comes to a book like the Bible, 
Are you someone who is trusting what someone else says? Are you being honest enough with yourself to go and see what the book says? And if it's offering you a challenge, if it says, test me to see if my words are true, are you willing to do that? Are you honest enough to do that? Some of the other things in the Bible that are very compelling. The Bible doesn't spend a lot of time talking about science. It does spend a lot of time talking about history. And just two points that you might want to consider in being honest and being fair to the writing of the Bible. In the book of Job, we have a description of the complete hydrologic cycle. That is, rain falling to the ground, water absorbing back up into the clouds, cycling around, falling back down, and causing that whole process of the hydrologic cycle to take place. The interesting thing is that Job, historically, is the first book that was ever written in the Bible, perhaps even before 1500 B.C., when it was very unlikely that man had any understanding of this principle. Another note is history. The Hittite Empire is mentioned very significantly in Scripture and having a significant impact not only on world history in general, but as a powerful influence on the history of Israel in particular. And for centuries, people discounted the Bible because they said the Hittites never existed until about a century and a half ago when people began finding tens of thousands of archaeological finds and documents pointing to the Hittite Empire. Now all of us who have had a history of Western civilization or an ancient history course in school or in college have learned rather extensively about the Hittites because they are an integral part of world history, demonstrating that what the Bible has to say about the Hittite culture is true. The Bible even talks about the return of Israel. It talks about Israel returning to its land from being scattered all over the world. And it even talks about their language being restored, the original Hebrew language being restored after not being spoken for almost 2,000 years. These are just a few things, just a few little tidbits that should at the very least spark your interest to go in, even if you just want to look at the Bible from a historical standpoint. But be fair with the Bible. My suggestion, my personal suggestion, would be to go to the Gospel of John. It's the fourth book in the New Testament. And just read those first three chapters. You'll learn about Jesus, and you'll learn why he came. And you'll learn who he is in relationship to God from the beginning. And don't go in with any preconceived notions. Just go in as an observer and take the author at his word and see what treasures you may find there. That's all the author of any of the books of the Bible asks you to do. You have an open invitation to come, to read, to learn, and to make your own decision based on what you find there.